group of people. What a stoke. This was a big winner for us, wasn't it? This was a big one. That was a great victory. And I just want to thank you. Governor is here. Doug, where are you? Doug. Okay, come on, Doug. Look at him. See? He gave up the good location so you could have a good location. Thank you very much, Doug, and very much, Catherine, for being here. We appreciate it. And you have a man who's here who's a special friend of mine, works with us so hard on all of the tax cuts and the regulation cuts and all of the things we do. Your great senator, John Hoven. John? Where's John? Thank you, John. And Mikey, thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. And Kevin is uh, special. I have to tell you, I came for Kevin. Uh, I've been here for Kevin. I asked Kevin to do it. He was the one that could do it. He's the one that you love in this state. And I said, it's time. And I think you're going to do fantastically well. And you know how well he's doing. He's really doing a fantastic job. So I just want to thank him for going into the race. And, uh, you know, if, if you look at what he and Chris have done, in a short period of time, they've really turned it around. And uh, they're leading. I won't even tell them by how much. Okay? I don't want to tell them by how much. I don't want to tell them by how much. But uh, he's doing great. That's all I want to say. Always assume you're down by one point. It's the best, right? That way you work real hard. I want to thank also, thank you. I want to thank also Kelly Armstrong, who's here someplace. Kelly? Thank you, Kelly. Running for Congress and also uh, really out there, a very popular, very outstanding person. And thank you very much. Uh, you're going to do fantastic, Kelly. Appreciate it. And Rick Berg, who's the head of the Republican Party. Rick, thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. So we have a very simple, well-defined task. We want to have strong borders. We want to have low taxes. We want to cut the hell out of regulations. We want, and by the way, we want regulations. Somebody, a very popular guy here was just interviewing me. You know who I'm talking about, great guy. And he said, uh, what do you think of President Obama's speech? And I said, I'm sorry, I watched it, but I fell asleep. I found he's very good, very good for sleeping. <laughs> I think he was trying to take some credit. He was trying to take credit for this incredible thing that's happening to our country. If the Democrats got in, I have to say this to President Obama, and it wasn't him, but it would have been the same thing. If the Democrats got in with their agenda in November of almost two years ago, Instead of having 4.2 up, I believe, honestly, you'd have 4.2 down. You'd be negative. You'd be in negative numbers right now. You'd be in negative numbers. We were heading south. And you look at those bad numbers that were there in the last couple of years. It was this way and going in the wrong direction. It was the weakest recovery in the history of our country since, I guess, to be totally specific, because I'm not sure they've gone any further since the Great Depression in the 20s. It was the weakest recovery we've ever had. It was barely a recovery. And now this is called, not recovery, this is called rocket ship, what's happened. And today, today numbers came out, and this is something that makes me happy. The numbers were great, the job numbers were great, the numbers have been incredible, almost from the beginning. It took me a few months to get the engine started. Uh, and we did that with regulation. I mean, we did that by freeing it up. You had pipelines that couldn't be built. I immediately approved them. Yes. Dakota. How about Dakota Access? That was a very unfair situation. And, you know, I approved it. I thought there'd be protests. I had, no, I had no, nobody called me. They just built the pipeline. It's been working ever since. A lot of jobs. It was very unfair. They got their approvals, and then they said, you have your approvals, but you can't build it. You'll never be able to build it. And they, I was told they would never be able to build it. I approved it on day one. On day one, it was approved. The same thing with Keystone. I approved Keystone. Total of 48,000 jobs, but more importantly, two great projects. And we approved them both immediately, and you would have been stuck 
you would have been stuck. You were never getting that approved. And uh, so many people thank me for that. I guess more importantly, though, when I walked in, I was walking in with Kevin Kramer and walking through the door, and a strong man came up to me, tough kind of a guy, and said, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for saving our country. Yeah. And, and he, had, he had tears coming down his eyes. He had, this wasn't just a statement, because he had tears coming down, unless he was a real wise guy. <laughs> but he had tears coming down his eyes. And he said, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for saving our country. And I want to thank you for all of the horrible things that you have to go through because it's so unfair to you, and it's so unfair to all of the millions and tens of millions of people that voted for you. It's true. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I really appreciated that. And it is. It's very hard for Republicans and conservatives. We have a great judge right now being looked at to go up and uh, be the next justice of the United States Supreme Court. This is a great intellect. He's a great man. He's a fine person. And the way they're screaming and shouting, and uh, it's, a, it's a disgrace to our country, actually. I don't know if anybody's been watching it. They're making fools out of themselves. And one of those people I'll be running against in two and a half years. I'll be running against them. And I look so forward to it, because we'll be able to give it back. So forward to it. But the court system is very important. I'm going to be appointing and have appointed uh, a record number of judges. Uh, we're going to be uh, district court judges. We have court of appeals. We have Supreme Court, of course. And one of the reasons that it's so important to get Kevin in is just that. Because, you know, it could change very quickly. And we could actually have, you know, this will be, hopefully, everything goes very well with Judge Kavanaugh. He's, uh, he's central casting. You know, 10 years ago, they said he'll be a Supreme Court judge. The intellect is extraordinary, and the man is extraordinary. But they were saying this uh, years ago. I heard it even before I ever thought I'd be doing this, that there was a man named Kavanaugh who's extraordinary. And those are the people we want on the Supreme Court. And we have two of them. We'll have him, hopefully. And we have Justice Gorsuch, who was just an outstanding, an outstanding man. I'm very proud of it. But we have to keep it going. If we don't keep it going, that changes. And if it changes, that affects your Second Amendment rights. That affects so many different things. We don't have to go into it, but it affects so many different elements of your life. Uh, I know it's a big Native American population, and I know it's been very tough, and I know Heidi has not done a good job in helping them and taking care of them. and. Uh, I sort of vote for her because maybe they haven't had the right choices. Maybe they don't know about what's going on with respect to the world of Washington and politics. But I have to tell you, uh, with African-American folks, I would say, what do you have to lose? As I read a list of the worst things you've ever heard, uh, highest crime rates, worst education, lowest home ownership. And I'd read like 10 items. And I'll never forget, they gave me a list. I was making a big speech. And I'm reading all of these horrible things about crime and education and home and so many things. And I just said, what do you have to lose? Vote for me. What the hell do you have to lose? Do you remember that? <laughs> and my people, my people all came up to me. Oh, that you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't. I said, why? The response was incredible. Why? <laughs> And I used it over and over again. And, and frankly, uh, you know, we went way up. And, um, and now we've produced. Because now uh, African-American unemployment is at the best number in the history of our country. Best number meaning it's at the lowest in the history of our country. And Asian American and Hispanic American and uh, women is 65 years. But Hispanic, think of it. Hispanic is the best number in the history of our country. And Asian is the lowest in the history of our country. And I say with respect to the Native Americans that I go right back to where I was two years ago when I was campaigning. What do you have to lose? 
What do you have to lose? You put Kevin Kramer into that position, and you're going to see things happen that you'll never see with Heidi. You're just never going to see it with Heidi. So I'll say very respectfully, what the hell do you have to lose? Okay? So I have a list, and the list goes on and on. It's four pages of things that the Trump administration has accomplished in a short period of time. It's less than two years. This goes on and on and on. I have and if I read it to you, look at this. This is, if I read, each dot is a thing, okay? And some of those things are very big things. More than four million jobs created since the election. Think of that. 201,000 jobs just last month, brand new jobs. Wages are growing at the fastest pace in nearly a decade. And what happened this morning? Did you hear that? 2.9 percent. It's like the best wage number that we've had in many, many years. And that makes me very happy. <laughs> to me, you know, we had great jobs numbers this morning. They were just announced. And they were fantastic. But the one that stuck out to me was the wage. I mean, people are starting to be able to live to live. So not only unemployment, but the wages are starting to go up for people. More Americans are now employed than ever before in the recorded history of our country. Think of it. Today, right now, we have more people working than have ever worked. We've created more than 400,000. That's very soon going to be 600,000 manufacturing jobs since my election. Well, President Obama said you won't have manufacturing jobs anymore. They're not around. They're around. Because if you look at what I've done for your coal industry, it's incredible. We had a man who is in the mining business. He said, sir, what you've done for the coal industry is incredible because we were dead and now we're vibrant again. Where is he? Where is that guy? Where? Shout out your name, please. I signed his hat. The guy's probably loaded and I'm signing hats. <laughs> hey, come up here. Get him up here. Can you try to get him up? I don't know. Who the hell knows who he is? All I know is in the coal business. Who is he? Come on up. See if you can get him up here. He'll have to work through. He's going to have to work through Secret Service, but who cares? I'm, I'm telling you, Secret Service, he'll be all right. This guy wants to protect Trump. Come here. Come here. Does everybody recognize him? I don't. But he's a big. He's one of the biggest. Tell him what you said about the coal industry. Do you mind? This is always very dangerous for me. To... <laughs> if, if, when given an order, I guess you, uh, you obey. I, what, what I said is that, you know, for eight years, the coal industry absolutely had the boot of government on its throat. Uh, and many, many jobs were lost, and many towns were destroyed by this. And it was just a horrible thing. Horrible suffering that happened in this country, really for made-up reasons. I think. And what your administration do, has done is bring us back to life. Um, jobs have been... <laughs> jo jobs have been created. Um, you know, families now have an opportunity to provide for themselves and have a great future in educations and small towns in North Dakota and other places really survive because they've got a great coal mine, they've got a great power plant, and it's, you know, it's what America's about. Um, and it's great to see that we again care about those things. So thank you, very Mr. Nice. President. Thank you very much. That's so nice. Now, I could stand up here and talk about coal for a half an hour, and I couldn't do as good a job as he just did. Because, seriously, because he's in the business. He knows. He said, you know, you, we were dead, and now we're a vibrant, really a vibrant industry again. And you know another industry that's vibrant, it affects you a little bit less, but it affects everybody, is steel. The steel industry is coming back like I've never seen anything because of what we've done. 
Uh, we've done, uh, with all the dumping, they're not doing so much dumping anymore, but the steel industries are coming back. And, you know, when they do dump, they're paying a lot of money on the dumped seal that they're sending in here. <laughs> and it goes right into the coffers of our country, and that's okay. But U.S. Steel is opening up eight plants. Uh, Nucor and others are opening up plants. Some of them are spending close to a billion dollars on a brand new plant. Uh, the steel industry is one of the great things to be talking about. So the manufacturing jobs are back. They're coming back, and they're coming back at levels. Economic growth, as you know, last quarter, 4.2. New unemployment claims recently hit a 49-year low. Median — think of that. I mean, I'm going through them like, huh. <laughs> no, think of it. Medium — yes. Median household income hit the highest level ever recorded. That's not bad, right? These are some of the biggies. American pensions have grown more than $2 trillion in value since the election. I said before, African-American unemployment, the, the best ever. The best ever, lowest number ever. Hispanic-American, Asian-American, women, 65 years. Sorry about that. It's uh, — I like history better, right? Historic, as opposed — I joke, but on women, it's 65 years. Best numbers and unemployment in 65 years. It's good. It'll be uh, historic, uh, I would say, best in history very shortly, probably another two weeks. Youth unemployment. <laughs> youth unemployment, the best in half a century. Lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for Americans without a high school diploma. Isn't that a great thing? I mean, nobody even talks about this stuff. That's like — you probably would never even heard of these categories. Those are important categories to me. Veterans' unemployment recently reached its lowest in uh, more than 20 years, and that's going up rapidly. I even think it's wrong. I think it's a much higher, even much better than that. If it's not, I'll make sure it is, okay? I'll make sure, because we love our veterans. Almost 3.9 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps since my election. 3.9. So, Medicare, if you look at what the Democrats are doing, they're going to destroy Medicare, and they're going to destroy your Social Security. We're going to save your Social Security. We're going to keep it. We're not going to touch it. Did you see when I campaigned, I was the only one that said, we're not touching your Social Security? They'd say, how are you going to do it? I said, growth. We're growing faster than even I projected, although I thought we'd be around that number. <laughs> Most other people — if I would have said it during the campaign, they would have laughed me off the stage. Um, They've been trying to do that for a long time. That hasn't <laughs> — that hasn't been working too well, has it? And we're going to grow a lot faster. You know, the fact is, we're doing well, and you got the 4.2s. We're going to go much higher than that. Most people would have said, 4.2, that'll take years to get there. Well, it didn't take years to get there. Very quick. And last time, we were at 3.2, uh, and everybody was shocked. I said, it's going to go much higher. It's going to go much, much higher than anybody believes. You know, when we fix the trade deals, yes. that has a big impact. We're losing — we're losing $100 billion with Mexico. We're losing anywhere from 25 to $50 billion with Canada. You know, even though Canada likes to say we have no deficit, they're smart in saying that. They have a sheet out that it's $98.2 billion, okay? The sheet. But they don't show us that sheet. That's meant for other reasons. But they showed $98.2 billion. We're working on a deal with Canada. We'll see if it's good. If it's a good deal for us, if it's good for them, I want it to be good for everybody. But we cannot continue to get ripped off like we've been ripped off before. Our farmers are very important to me. Our farmers — and you're great patriots. Honestly, you're really great American patriots. And it takes a little time. But China wasn't letting you in for — I mean, for peanuts. And the European Union has been very, very tough on you. They have barriers. They have trade barriers. They sell us, but we aren't allowed to go in there. I said, we can't do that. And if you're going to do that, we're going to tax your cars, because that's very easy. And that's the biggest money. The cars, it's all about the cars. That's the biggest money. And they're all pouring cars into our country, and we don't — essentially don't tax them. It's two and a half percent, but for the most part, they don't pay. You know, why should they pay? Why should they pay the U.S.? They're not used to paying the U.S. Now they're paying. But it's only two and a half percent. And with them, number one, they don't take our cars. And number two, if they do, their tariff is many, many times the amount that they pay us. So we tax the cars. And as soon as they say that, they all say, okay, we'll make a deal. 
So every time I have a problem with any of these, you know, many of these countries that we're talking about, especially the big car countries, uh, I just say, okay, look, we can't make those deals. That's okay. I'm going to put a 20% tax on your cars. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll agree. We'll agree. I mean, actually, in some countries, including Canada, a tax on cars would be the ruination of the country. That's how big it is. It would be the ruination of the country. Now, they've taken advantage of us for many decades. We can't let this happen anymore. We have a country to run. You know the expression, we have a company to run? Well, we have a country to run. And when I get these horrible trade deals, these are one-sided horrible deals. I think NAFTA, I mean, a lot of people forget, but I think NAFTA has been the worst trade deal ever. I actually think World Trade Organization was probably the worst of all. But a lot of people don't know what that is. But that allowed China to become this great economic power. And I'm a big fan of President Xi, but I told him, I said, we have to be fair. We can't let China take out $500 billion a year out of the United States and rebuild itself. We have some of these countries, they're considered uh, growing economies. They're considered nations that are not mature yet, so we are paying them subsidies. The whole thing is crazy. <laughs> you know, like India, like China, like others. We say, oh, they're growing, I see. So I want to be put down in that category because we're growing too. We're going to grow faster than anything. <laughs> And You know, they call them developing nations. Well, we're a developing nation, too. Okay, we are. We're, as far as I'm concerned, we're a developing nation. They call themselves developing nations, and under that category, they get subsidies. We have to pay them money. It's, the whole thing is crazy. But we're going to stop it. We're going to stop it. We have stopped it. And when we're securing militarily. John Kelly is here, General Kelly. He's great. When we're securing the wealthy countries from outside harm because we're paying for their military, I think it's fine, but they got to pay us for this. We, we're, we're watching the whole world, and they take it for granted. For years and years, we've been protecting these countries. They're making a fortune. They've had very little military cost. We have the biggest military cost in the world. Most of it goes to protecting outside countries, some of who don't even like us, some of whom don't even like us. I mean, we're protecting countries that have, I got to say, they do have respect for us now, but they didn't have any respect for us. And they got to pay. They got to pay, you know, when they're wealthy. Now, we are going to protect some people that need help, and that's okay. That's understandable. We all understand that. But when we're protecting these massively wealthy countries, I'm not going to name them, but you probably know some of whom I'm talking about, they got to pay. Because we're not going to be the protector of the world and lose a fortune and have our taxpayers paying while these other countries are living very beautifully thanks to us. Not fair. So we changed that around. I hope everybody agrees with that. And by the way, then this idiot Woodward, who wrote this book, which is all fiction, said, said that I said something like that, but he put it in a very crude manner. Uh, I, the concept is true, but the way it was said was very, you know, hey, I went like to the best college. I did lots of good. I mean, you read this thing, the quotes were wrong. All these, John Kelly, General Mattis, they're all writing, I never said that, I never said that. I, you know, well, it's fiction. But, they do put down the concept of, I said that, and they say, isn't that horrible? Isn't that crude? Crude. You know what? I want to have our nation protected, and I don't want to be taken advantage of by other countries in the world. And you know what? They respect us more when they have to pay their bills, and they can afford to pay their bills, and it's going to make a big difference for our country. You wait, you watch, you see. Um, and so many other things. I could go uh, help with the Olympics. We got the Olympics. We just got the World Cup. That's small stuff compared to, I mean, I, I must tell you. We opened Enwar, potentially the biggest in the world, right? They've been trying to do it for 45 years. Uh, we uh, have a record number of regulations eliminated in the history of this country in less than two years. I've cut more regulation than any other president, regardless of how long they've served.
And I think that might have been just as important as the tax cut. Regulatory relief for community banks. They were dying, the community banks. Now they can loan you money. Make a good deal, please. We enacted all sorts of different uh, elements for credit unions to come, so they make it possible for you. My administration is providing more affordable health care options for Americans through association health plans and short-term duration plans. We have all sorts of health care. We actually had it beaten, but that's a long story. We repealed and replaced, but we'll do it. We'll do it. We had it done, but it, uh, something happened. But, but, but we need, frankly, you're right. Heidi's vote would have been great if we had Heidi's vote, but she voted against it. But we got, if you remember, the individual mandate was wiped out. So we wiped out the individual mandate, which is the most unpopular part of Obamacare. We wiped it out. And then I have three more pages, two more pages, just like this, look. Okay? But isn't this much, isn't this much more exciting than listening to President Obama say? <laughs> Because we get things done. All of this, like the gentleman from the coal industry. I mean, I've had that from so many people. I've had it from so many other industries. What we're doing for timber and lumber, what we're doing for so many other industries, what we're doing for cars. Plants are moving back to the United States. They're coming into Michigan. They're going into Ohio. They're going into Pennsylvania. They're going into North Carolina. We have a lot of them, a lot of them coming back in. Tremendous. And th we have just started. One of the things I wanted is I don't want our companies, and I just insist on I don't want our companies moving to other countries, firing everybody, losing these great companies and losing these great jobs. And that's the thing I'm most insistent on with trade deals. We did NAFTA. Our country emptied out. They still have empty places up in New England, these big factories that are all empty. They went and moved to Mexico and other places, but they moved to Mexico. So I could go on and on and reach uh, so many different things. Uh, we've started the wall. It's, uh, it's moving along. Kevin is a big fan. Kevin's a big fan of the wall. And uh, I, I just say this. We have so many things. Uh, I, I will, I will. Put it very strongly, your second amendment is under siege. Yes. You put the wrong person in there, they're going to vote with Schumer. Look, Heidi is going to vote with Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. I always add Maxine Waters in there because... <laughs> but, but he's going to vote with... We're going, to, we're going to vote... He's going to vote with me. He's going to vote on making America great again, which soon... <laughs> which soon we're going to be changing to keep America great, exclamation point. Keep America great. But Kevin's going to be with us, and we've got the agenda for the courts, the agenda for the borders. We want borders. We don't want people pouring into our country. We have no idea who they are, where they come from. And, you know, with these lotteries that we have, we have lotteries from countries where people come in through a lottery system. Do you think that these countries are sending us their finest? I don't think so. Now, they would say, that's a terrible thing to say. I mean, when I hit MS-13 and I call them animals, they're animals, uh, Nancy Pelosi said, how dare he say that about another human being, you know? Uh, no, we have to be tough. We have to protect our law enforcement just like they protect us. ICE is under siege, and our law enforcement is under siege. And they want to have weak law enforcement. And basically, they want to have crime come in. Look what happened in Chicago with a liberal mayor that had these stupid, stupid policies. But now he's not running anymore, so that's fine. But, I mean, two weeks ago, 68 people shot, 12 died. Chicago. That's our country. I mean, it skews the crime figures, because the crime figures in the United States are doing well. But you add, that's a lot of addition in terms of skewing numbers. But that'll get straightened out. It's easy to straighten out if you have the right policy. It's actually easy to straighten out. So we want to have strong borders, and that's Kevin. We want to have no crime, that's Kevin. Kevin Kramer. We want to have... We're going to have totally protected 
Medicare. We're going to protect our Social Security. That's Kevin. The Democrats are going to destroy your Social Security. As sure as you're standing there, sorry for the no seats, but the crowd was bigger than they're supposed to be. <laughs> but as sure as you're standing there, they are going to, they want to destroy your Social Security. We're going to protect it. Kevin's going to protect your Second Amendment, and so am I. Yes. But you know, <laughs> things like that, that's a very important thing. And things like that, they are under siege, and things like that can disappear very quickly very quickly if you don't have the right people. So I'm here for Kevin Kramer. I want to thank you all for supporting him. It's, uh, it's an honor for me because he's a very special man. Uh, I really said, you really owe it to the country. You have to do this. You have to do this. We need that vote. We need him. We need his brain power. We need his presence in Washington, D.C., because that place is brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> It's a, a lot of bad, bad things up here going, going through people's heads. These are sick people. These are sick people. I mean, the deceit and the, you know, some of these Democrat senators, oh, Mr. President, how are you? I'm such a fan, Bob, Bob. But then I see him on television 10 minutes later, we must get rid of this guy. I said, wait a minute, I just said hello to the guy 15 minutes ago. He's hugging and kissing me. He's hugging, he's kissing, and then he's talking. These people, it's bad. <laughs> I used to say, real estate guys in New York, they're really tough. Now I say, they're babies. <laughs> they're babies. But we need, we need Kevin there. We have to have him. So I'm here for him. I honor him, and I honor you for helping. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>